Sun's just coming up. We sailed overnight from the Kendabu area round to the southwest tip of the main island. Most of the passages between islands we have to do overnight because it's too far to go during one day and you need daylight to get out of the reef at one side and daylight to get in the reef at the next one. It's about 110 miles between reef entrances here. We've been out from Savu Savu for about six weeks so we're very low on fresh food. We're looking forward to topping up with fresh food, water and gas here, and we'll be ready to go and explore some more. Viti Levu is the main island of Fiji, and it's huge. The highest peak is over 1,300 metres tall, so large in fact that it blocks out the trade winds and there's often little or no wind in its shadow. Luckily we have a boat which only needs a light breeze to get her moving. Check out this sunset. jumped on the bus to the market. The people in the outer islands where we've been live mainly by subsistence farming, growing just enough food for themselves. That meant there were no markets or shops selling fresh fruit and veg so we're really happy to be able to stock up here. Whilst chatting with the market vendors, we were told that the mighty Fiji rugby team would be playing an international match against neighbours and fierce rivals Tonga that afternoon, just around the corner from the market. So we hurried to pack our fresh food back to Florence and jump back on the bus just in time to catch the match. but unfortunately Fiji didn't win. One of the things we don't often share is the amount of time that we spend researching where in the world we're heading to next. The beauty of sailing is we can literally go anywhere that's got a coastline. The problem is this presents so many options. In reality we're confined by the hurricanes and the cyclones. These occur in fairly well defined areas and at certain times of the year so we can plan our route carefully to avoid them. Ultimately, our goal is to continue sailing west around the world, back to England. Planning is a constant process. When we left England in 2016, we had a really clear idea that we wanted to get to New Zealand in time to shelter there for the cyclone season. But we enjoyed our time in the South Pacific so much that we decided to have another season here. 
But now we've got the problem of where we go to shelter from this cyclone season. From here in Fiji we have three options. Options one and two are to get south of the cyclone area by going to either New Zealand or Australia. Option three is to go north of the cyclone area, up through the Solomon Isles and up to Papua New Guinea in the Philippines. Since we've already been to New Zealand, we're trying to decide between north to the Solomons or south to Australia. Just looking at the chart, the route to the north and the Solomons really appealed to us, but we needed to get some more information on that area. We use information from other cruisers' blogs and websites such as Noonsight, where cruisers log their experiences of various countries. We also contact friends in the cruising community who have now sailed on the season ahead of us. We found that the northern route via the Philippines was potentially unsafe due to piracy. Different people have different attitudes to risk, but for us there are so many beautiful places in the world, we don't feel the need to visit any that are potentially unsafe. So we decided to head south to Australia and maybe down to Tasmania before heading back up the coast of Australia and around the top and then we have to decide either across the Indian Ocean to South Africa or add an extra year to our circumnavigation and spend a year going through Indonesia. I know what the person to the left of me would like to do. <laughs> she doesn't want to go home. I don't say I don't want to go home. I do want to go home, just not yet. <laughs> With Florence all stocked up, two very good friends, Ron and Ali, flew out from England to join us we explored the Usawa group of islands in western Fiji. We also met up with good friends Jim and Linda on board Bright Moments, whom we had cruised with last year in Tonga, and we sailed in company again. We weren't racing, honest. I'm not sure if Amy's doing yoga or praying for wind. I know which would be most practical right now. Our friend Ron is used to a life in the fast lane. He's the designer of a couple of foiling dinghies. This is him and Amy sailing one of his prototypes back before we left England. And this is his latest design, the F101. So we thought it would be funny to put him in the machine for some time trials around a short course. <laughs> so Miss Race Officer, what are your thoughts on the competitors today? Who's your money on? Um, well, <laughs> my money's not on Ron. Ron's uh, 53 seconds into his race and he has not yet crossed the start line and is currently bailing out his boat after an unfortunate capsize en route to the start line. <laughs> Uh, you're two minutes and fifteen in. Oh, that's not fair. I blew the horn. Yeah, but you didn't know what time it was. But if he's over the line, you have to do two hoots and let him know, you see. Ron did eventually come out on top. The main anchorages in this area are fairly busy, but there are still some beautiful quiet spots to be found away from the resort. The water here is crystal clear. We love it when we can swim directly from Florence and experience the wonders of nature below our keel. We could stay in water like this for hours. The clarity makes you feel like you're flying.
There wasn't much in the way of live coral here, but the variety and quantity of fish was stunning. Every reef has something different. We always see at least one new species of fish or coral every time we snorkel, so it never gets old for us. Next time, we say goodbye to Fiji and set sail for the 450 mile passage to Vanuatu.